Welcome back to Nightcap Chat, the pop culture, comics, and gaming podcast. Today, we are recapping San Diego Comic-Con 2019. I'm Blade O'Neill. I'm Ken Brown. Well, Ken, you actually went to Comic-Con. I had the luxury of watching all the news happen live on, on Facebook. And, yes. and how, how was Comic-Con? Comic-Con's always fun. I said, too, sometimes it gets to be just so many people in one area. I heard that about it this yes. year. It was kind of chaotic. Yeah. And I think like when you're more, it's kind of like watching the Super Bowl now. You know, you get more out of watching the Super Bowl from your own comfort of your own living room. Y- like yeah. that you get all the information you want through social media just popping in as soon as it happens. And literally, as soon as it happened, I was watching live blogs of, of Hall H. You yes. know, like I was like being right there like, oh my gosh, they just announced you know, Thor, Love, and Thunder, this and that, you know? Yep, so people that get their media credentials where they need to be can get you that information instantaneously. Yep. I mean, even being at the Diamond Retailer Luncheon Summit, mm-hmm. and it was kind of cool because I'm getting, oh, wow, I think getting all this information from the publishers, and I'm going online, and I'm seeing this information was released within, like, five minutes before they're telling us. What? And so they're definitely doing interviews with these publishers yeah. even before. Wow. They, I don't know if that's, that's the press people doing interviews with their 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 press managers. Yeah, I guess so. Or things like, okay, what are we going to be talking about during this? Well, let's get it out to the press so that way they can be reporting it as we're reporting it to the retailers. For sure. And I, it was blowing me away. Like Image, for instance, uh, Scott Snyder and Charles Soule are working on a new series that's going to be called Undiscovered Country. Yes, I and I, I think I actually saw, mm-hmm. saw one of the posts from you uh, yes. when that was being And I announced. thought I was breaking news on it because I was there. I was going, yeah, that, it was, it was, it was the be. breaking news for me. <laughs> Thanks, dude. And I started going online and going, oh my gosh, dude, people already have this stuff up there. Already. That's nuts. And I thought I was like on top of it because I'm reporting it. We're in the I information age. I guess that's the beauty of the internet. Yes, and it was that was what? That's all Image wanted to talk about. I'm going, you have all these titles at Image and you're presenting to the retailers one book that they want to feel the gap of walking dead yeah. being canceled walking dead's gone like there there is a hole in people's hearts now yes. and it's it's going to be a a rush to to go fill that you know just just yes. like game of thrones ending like everyone's wants to be the next game of thrones so we've got shows like the boys coming out we've got the amazon's lord of the rings series um there's, there's so many things that everyone wants to be the next game of thrones. even game of thrones wants to be the next game of thrones with yes. the prequel uh show that they're doing you know like so so there are voids that that need to be filled yep and and, and it's amazing because image always goes through about 12 to 15 books they want to talk about huh. every time you do these like luncheons yeah. and the companies are there to more or less get you excited as retail owners of what your customers are going to be looking at yes, and what they're going to be hearing about and make sure you don't miss the orders on this. Mm-hmm. And to see image focus on one book that was to me, it was like, wow, this book's going to be huge. Interesting. And I said to Scott Snyder, been a Scott Snyder fan since American vampire Absolutely. And severed and, you know, um, witches and everything that he's done. On Greg, Batman, Greg run on Batman, yeah. Justice League right now. He just he's he's a golden writer right now. I mean, that's that's a number one to, to look out for, for yes. sure. I mean, look, look at the Batman number one. Like, I mean, that that skyrocketed. Yes. I mean, that was a one to two hundred dollar issue for a while. Yeah, Giuseppe Comicoli is going to be doing the art on it, if I remember okay. correctly, from what I oh. off the top of my head here. And Giuseppe Comicoli is like he's a good artist, but he's not a Greg Capullo. Yeah, for but sure. It's cool to look through. They gave us a sample Ashcan edition for us to read through, and oh. it looks like Giuseppe's best work. Okay, and that's really cool to see Fun. how the artists that work with Image really, if they get behind an idea, mm-hmm. there's no limitations of how they need to draw or what they need to draw. Like it's just they get to look at the story and what they imagine they can put on the page. Mm-hmm. There's no like Marvel standards, no DC standards. Everything has to look like Jim Lee's artwork. Yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely. Or Marvel, how to draw the Marvel way? Marvel's much more loose about it than they used to be. Mm-hmm. But it's at image it's really fun to see that they really do get to put in their own image into the comics i mean that's that should be what independent publishing is all about you know seeing something different seeing these indie creators visions and not just you know adhering to certain standard not saying that it's subpar or anything but like see something different here yes um before we delve into all the crazy crazy news and of you know i think one of the biggest set of announcements coming out of San Diego Comic Con since probably they announced Infinity War. Uh, what was what was your favorite thing about about Comic Con this year? Wow, um, having attended. 
Yes, it's. I'm going to be off the radar on the grid here. I really like the Amazon exhibit of The Boys. Okay, and The Boys is the new Amazon show based on it's like a graphic novel, right? Yes, the, it's the original Boys. comic series that ironically started off at DC mm. with Wildstorm. Mm-hmm. And Garth Ennis and Dark Derek Robertson were the creators on it. And it was more or less a ex-superheroes and ex or people that were part of... But um, The Boys is Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson's look at kind of a Hollywood Kardashian type of look at superheroes being mm-hmm. so revered in society, they can get away with whatever they want. Interesting. And um, some of the people are not too happy with how superheroes get away with crap. They shouldn't get away with just because they are who they are. Interesting. And so there's and a lot of that a, rings true today. His, what was, so what, so what was the the exhibit? Yeah, the exhibit yeah. more or less was an environment that made you feel like that you were in the boys' TV world. Okay, uh, like that. They're more or less. It's, it looked like it was kind of a set for them. They had a a grassy park area where yeah. it was kind of like a place they can hang out in their environment. Huh. Like they had a uh, like a farmers market place where you could sit down and yeah. have lunch. They had like a fruit stand there. They had like a um like a little strip mall type of thing where a car crashed into one of the buildings. Okay. Yeah. And then next to it was a place available for rents. And they were giving you more or less a guided tour mm-hmm. of what a boys episode would be like. Oh, and that was kind of a fun thing too. Unfortunately, yeah. we missed the cutoff time for the last tour of the day. Yeah. Cause I found out about it later in the day and we had lunch and then we went over to check out the Amazon boys things. Mm-hmm. I got a tip from someone that worked with Comcast while I was hanging out around the Starbucks over yeah. by the, the Hilton. That told me about the fact of, oh, you own a comic shop? So we started talking. I mentioned to him I own a comic shop. And he goes, yeah. did you go to the boys exhibit yet? And I go, no, not yet, dude. And it's like, that. I haven't got over there yet. I'm not sure where the Amazon exhibit is. And he goes, yeah. well, dude, you got to go check out the Amazon exhibit because they're doing a huge, huge boys environment. And there's a hidden comic shop on the grounds. Nice. And I'm going, a hidden comic shop? What are you talking about, hidden comic shop, dude? You you know, obviously, you know, I own a comic shop. So that's going to pique my interest. Mm-hmm. He goes, well, there's a password to get into the comic shop. They won't tell you what it is. You kind of have to research it. But if you figure it out, they'll let you into the secret comic shop. So it was shop. a scavenger hunt. Yes, absolutely. Which to me is like, it's always fun to yeah. go looking for something you know that's there and they give you clues. Yeah, absolutely. And so we went over to the Amazon exhibit and, you know, you had to scan your badge in to get in. And mm-hmm. so unfortunately, that's the only thing that I thought San Diego Comic Con was kind of fun to do stuff inside and outside the con. Yeah. But even some of the stuff outside the con, you still need to have the badge to scan in to uh, be part of the environments that they yeah. have there for you. So. Fortunately, a little bit of a limitation on that. If you don't get a San Diego Comic-Con mm. badge on that, too, I wish they would open the stuff outside of Comic-Con open for people that can't make it into Comic-Con. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's still not always the case. Yeah. And I uh, went through this exhibit, and you know, I was super excited, so I kind of figured like anybody I asked would know what I'm talking about, but they play the roles well. It's like, nice. the, we're not sure what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? There's no comic shop here. And it's like, Hail oh, Hydra. <laughs> exactly, dude. It was very Hail Hydra type of moment. And uh, after doing some digging, you know, they put us on a little bit of a treasure hunt. And, uh, you know, it's like the car that was crashed into the window. They, uh, you know, it's like that. Uh, there's a place that had a four lease phone number on top of the building that was next door to it. And, mm-hmm. and someone said like, that, man, do you know it's about this comic shop? And some of the security guys are kind of a little bit cooler than the people that were working for the Amazon exhibit. Mm-hmm. So, dude, why don't you try calling that phone number up there? And so I tried calling the available phone number and it gave you a clue on there to go find the box of missing comics. Okay. And so started asking, Hey dude, did I, did I leave a box around here or something? Like, I think I dropped my comics, you know where they might be. And, mm-hmm. and like, they're kind of going, I don't know what you're talking about, man. It's like, no, I didn't see anything around here. And it's another security guard. I guess so I started learning security guards are giving you clues Yeah. and said, you might want to go check over by the food stands over there. Okay. <laughs> and so there's two separate food stands at the market. And so like it was four of us. So two of us went to one and then, the two of us went to the other and mm-hmm. went over there. It's like that. Yeah, dude, man, I think I left my box of comics here. Have you seen this anywhere? And it's like, uh, what, what are you talking about? And like box of comics. I didn't see anybody leave anything here. It's like, dude, I'm looking for the, the secret comic shop. Do you have any clues for me? And it goes, Oh, you're one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> it says, like, I want to check the other place over there. And it walked over and there was like a big freaking treasure box on the ground. Wow. Like, or, you know, like, yeah, a, yeah. 
Like a chest. pirate's booty chest. Yeah. Do you know what wow. I mean? And you open it up and there's this one comic in there and it's a boy's comic and it's got like a picture taped to it of the car. Okay. That's crashed into the the yep. neighboring yep. business that's for rent mm-hmm. and the license plate's X'd out on it. Mm. It's like that, hey, you're closer to finding your mission. And okay. it's like that. Uh, this picture tells y'all. And so I'll go back to the car, crash in the window. I said, it must be the license plate number. Cause mm-hmm. they X'd out the license plate number. Yeah. So I memorized the license plate number and went over back to the people where we started, like asking the questions to. And I go, hey, is the password blah, 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 blah. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Yeah. And they go, I don't know what you're talking about. It's like that. The license plate on the car had this license plate number that was X'd out in the picture in the in the treasure box. Mm-hmm. We've been kind of going around like we know this comic shop's here. We just want to go visit the comic shop. And then she goes, hang on a second. So this lady goes back and comes back out and says, how many of you are there? And I said, there's there's me and three other people. And they go, okay, come on. And so they brought us back in this like little hidden comic shop that looked like a comic shop to a T. And yeah. they had the glass cases in there. Uh-huh. I saw my pictures on it social did. media. I did. But it was a blast. I was confused at what it is. I was like, what is this empty place that he's doing? Is that Comic Con? Is that this empty comic book shop yes. for some reason? <laughs> it, it was like so, like, you know, generic comic shop, but it was so much fun to kind of yeah. discover the missing, you know, almost like Indiana Jones and the Temple of It's a little of something different to do, too. Yes. And it wasn't planned. And so when you have mm-hmm. stuff like that comes up that isn't planned, that kind of makes me your best, best memories during the con. Yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. Let's take pictures in there. They had this whole wall of people that found it. People who don't suck. <laughs> was <laughs> on the top of it. Really? They even let me pin my business card up there, which I thought was kind of hilarious. And, it was, just, it was, it was a, it was a fun experience. Very cool. Well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you had fun for the most part. Mm-hmm. So I think the, some of the first announcements that I saw, and I don't know if that was Wednesday or Thursday or both, uh, Hasbro had a, a pretty big showing this year, you know, whether between their booth and their announcements. And I'm a Power Rangers fan, so like the yes. first couple of things that that stuck up to me was they're they're doing the White Ranger helmet nice. life size, which you know I'm a you know, I, I like Jason David Frank. He plays the Green and, and the White Ranger, and we're, we're actually sitting next to the the Green Ranger helmet right now, and it's it's cool. Yeah, you know, and it's, it it's like a real head inside of a helmet. Yeah, actually, there. I'm gonna hand this to Ken. So can you wear it like a real helmet too then? Yes, you can. Well, that is awesome. So it's like there's these little, little, st- nice. it is a little tight, but here you yeah, can. Yeah, it's just like the Iron Man helmet that Marvel exactly. put out too, dude, right? Oh man, dude, I don't want to squeeze my head in there, I'm afraid. It, it's tight. <laughs> I'll do like the fake. There you go. But they're, they're, it's a cool right. set. I think they they did a, a Red Ranger helmet uh, as well as the Red Ranger uh, from the movie. But I mean, wow, dude, that is freaking epic! It even looks like it would be comfortable if I could get it on. I don't want to break it though. Yeah, it's not it's not too bad. It is a little tight, you know. That is awesome. But I I have a big head for those. Here? Here. Oh, how do I get this on? Nice. It's like, oh, oh I nice. still love it, dude. I love how your beard sticks out the bottom of the yeah, tube. Yeah, my, my beard is, is, uh, is a little too big for it. Here? I gotta take a picture of that, dude. So you can post that on this week's episode pictures, dude. And now uh, you can, I'm we sure have. my voice sounds different because I am I am echoing right back into my own ears. That is awesome. You know, dude, real live Power Ranger podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We'll uh, we'll post a link in the well, the bio epic. of of today's episode. But they're finally doing the White Ranger helmet, and then as far as the Green Ranger stuff go, the the Hasbro released a new what's called the Lightning series, which I equate to you know like it's like the Star Wars Black series. It's like the Marvel Legends. You know, it's it's the standard six inch figures. And Hasbro has been doing, and we've talked about this in previous episodes, an incredible job uh, with their six inch figures. Between the articulation, the, the the cool packaging, so I'm I'm, I'm excited to see that we're gonna we're gonna get a proper Green Ranger nice. you know, out of it. Um, Dude, I love the packaging that Hasbro's been doing with all. It's of great. Their I mean, look at that. It's, slick, it's clean. It's, it's beautiful. It's awesome. You got the art, and you got the open window. It's so easy mm-hmm. to see the picture of the figure and the figure itself. And there, there's cool it's, accessories. You know, you you got you got the the Saba sword. You know, you've got the alternate head for Tommy in there. You've got alternate fists, even, awesome. which is awesome. Presentation's unbelievable. Absolutely. Figures. And so with the with the Green Ranger too. You know, usually you know the action figures get the dragon daggers, 
But this figure is also going to come with his evil Green Ranger sword that he nice. only has very briefly. It's like uh, they're really upping the ante on the accessories, which is which is really neat. Um, I know you don't really play Overwatch, but you know I'm I'm a big Overwatch fan. They're doing the Overwatch uh, Wave Two. Really looking forward to that Zarya figure. Um, but the, once again, like the articulation on those things have been awesome, and the packaging was really similar uh, to the uh, Power Rangers figures. And then, of course, the Marvel Legends. Yes. Uh, they're doing, you know, Fat Thor or Lebowski <laughs> Thor or whatever the you dad bod Thor. want to. Yeah, Dad Bod <laughs> Thor wave, which, yeah. you know, I mean, the the, the, the Fat figures. Thor is is kind of a cool figure. I mean, if you like, uh, that was kind of the most annoying part of Endgame to me. But I think that that wave is a little weak, don't you yeah. think? I mean, just Vision. I mean, who was all in it? We saw again. So like it was Valkyrie. Captain America from Avengers. It was yeah. Endgame, Iron Man, Valkyrie, Heimdall, Vision. That's all I remember. I think there might have been one, one more. more too. And it's just, it's a. Uh... Underwhelming. Yeah, I was not very impressed with following up such a great movie in Endgame with kind of a loose group of figures. Iron Patriot. Iron the other Patriot. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I don't know, I guess it's okay. They're figures that have not really been, well, Captain America and Iron Man been touched on about 15 times. Yeah. I mean, and, how many, uh, how many of those are, do we need? Uh, yes. I mean, to me, like Heimdall is the coolest one. You know, Idris Elba did an incredible job as Heimdall. I mean, but beyond that, I mean, it, it's certainly an underwhelming set. Yeah, you think they would really knock it out of the park with something that just had such a huge movie presence to it. To contrast that, though, the 80th anniversary figures look look phenomenal between oh, like absolutely. the classic Thor, and then there's that three pack with uh, Cyclops, uh, Jean Grey, and I think it's and Wolverine, and Wolverine has two heads. One of them is mask is ripped up. Uh, Cyclops, I think, has a jacket, and then Jean Grey has two different heads too, which is like it's like the Jim Lee. Um, okay. You the, know, the costume, yellow costume, the yellow and, and blue. A uh, really cool set. And it's um same thing, like they have that Hulk and Wolverine two-pack. Yes, first first appearance Wolverine two-pack, right? Yes. That one? And those, I think, are really fun, too, to see the two-packs. They did once with uh, Craven and Spider-Man, too, as well. And uh, more two-packs of, like, just first times being introduced. I mean, I love to see an Iron Fist and Sabretooth two-pack, because everyone thinks of Sabretooth and Wolverine. But how cool would it be to see a first appearance Sabretooth and Iron Fist? That would be cool, actually. Yes. And um, just any time, like, there is major rivalries. Dude, that looks freaking amazing. Isn't that a cool set? They look, the colors look like the old X-Men cartoon series, too, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Which is very, very... The packaging reminds me of a throwback to the 90s. Yeah, and that was, that was the cool thing about... I, I happen to find... Uh, the 90s card back Uncanny X-Men Dazzler, which wow. is she's in her 90s uh, costume. But the, the card backs are like the old 92 run of the X-Men uh, action one. figures. Yeah. Yes. I mean, how cool is that packaging? Like, and when you put it up next to, to your old collection, like, it you have that, yeah, how cool is that? I and, the, and the articulation and sculpting of is the, the, the figures is Legends cool. Figure. And yes. So it's the best of both worlds, in my opinion. Like, Marvel is killing it with this 80th year anniversary stuff, and, yes. and I don't know how we're going to get past August with all the awesome things that, that they're coming out. And I said, too, like, I hope they capitalize on everything they can during this 80th year. Yep. And sometimes they overkill. No, no overkill. Kill, dude. There's like 80 years of Marvel history mm -hmm. that you can reshare with this generation. Yep. And then and you can just collect, you know, what's your your favorite part of it, you know? Yes. And it's it's going to be fun to see how this turns out the rest of the year. I mean, I'd love to see I, I know it's not going to happen, but it'd be great to see Todd McFarlane just come back and do one Spider-Man story. And it's, uh, it's kind of uh, I saw they got Eric Larson back to do a Spider-Man anniversary issue okay. that's coming out this year. Yeah. I'm going, okay, you got Eric Larson. It kind of broke my heart when I saw in the Marvel previews where it talked about now Eric Larson, one of the most important Spider-Man artists of all time. And I'm going, yeah, he was a knockoff of McFarlane. You know, he was supposed to carry the, 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 the baton after Todd. That's a, that's a hard, promoted. that's a hard baton to carry, yes. you know, and, and that's hard act to follow. And, and I know Marvel's trying to do whatever, you know, the best they could to make sure like, cause Eric Larson is one of the more, rememberable spider-man artist but it was the todd mcfarlane era that he was taking over for. Mm -hmm. and so i i don't know if we're ever going to see todd mcfarlane draw spider-man i mean who knows he, he seems so busy with you know, we've got spawn 300 coming up we've got the spawn movie that may or may not happen i mean who knows yes 
I was just hoping that the 80th anniversary would be that year where you could get Todd onto a Spider-Man book again. Yeah, that that would be so incredibly cool. And it's um another thing too is like Hulk is in its prime right now too, which is, is uh, yeah the Immortal Hulk has been unbelievable right now too. Uh, Al Ewing has been uh, kind of what I say like the I would say 2019. Even though the House of X and Powers of X is happening right now, I mean, Hulk, I think, has been the character that has been the most steadily popular during this year, more than any of the other major Marvel characters. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you had, obviously, Avengers Endgame come out with the Avengers, and Captain Marvel had a movie come out, so she may have had a little push, but without anything major happening in the movie with this character, the Hulk comics, I think, have been the most reprinted multiple printings Marvel book going this year. And that's Interesting. been really impressive to see the Hulk mm. make his renaissance this year. Too. Yeah, no, good, good, good for him. I mean, he's, I mean, he's a rated character, but I mean, almost underrated with the way the movie's handling, but probably a lot of that has to do with, I think the distribution rights are tied up at universal. So that's why they can't do standalone Hulk. Uh, but sp- speaking of the comics, I mean, there was a real push on Jonathan Hick- Hickman's uh, like Powers of X, and yes. they're announcing another Annihilation. But Powers of X seems like it's you know, it's really shaking up things for the X Men. Yeah, House of X and Powers of X. It's a uh, what Jonathan Hickman said. It's the biggest event since Giant Size X Number One. Is how he built it as. And wow. Marvel's been backing him up with it too. Wow, that's and, uh, uh, <laughs> those are some shoes yeah, to fill. So I'm a big X Men fan, and to hear stuff like that, I'm going, wow, this better be huge and. I read through the first issue of the House of X number one, mm-hmm. and it's going to be connecting really closely between Powers of X. But uh, I was pretty impressed with the first issue. I mean, it goes, I can see the connection as to why it's saying the most important thing to happen since Giant Size number one, and he's more doing it on a literal sense, too, because he connects Krakoa into the modern storytelling of being such a significant factor for the future of mutants and human relations. Okay. And Krakoa is the living mutant island yeah. that trapped the X-Men way back in Giant Size x Number 1. Professor X mm-hmm. saw a mutant on this island and went to investigate it. It turned out the whole island was the mutant. And the X-Men got trapped and Cyclops escaped. And Professor X had to form a new team of X-Men. Yes, yes, and yes. So it's really kind of cool that Hickman's kind of paying attention to X-Men history, but put mm-hmm. a new thumbprint and a new twist and a new, I guess, branch to the X-Men family tree, going back to the history that's already been developed. And we've and we've talked on, on a previous episode about how the movies are now influencing the comics instead of vice versa. I, I think this run in particular, um, it'll be interesting to see what we end up getting out of all these yes. that they're setting up for the movie's sake more than... More, more than anything. It okay. is something totally different than what we've seen from the Foxman. Mm-hmm. And that's something I, I, I do hope they are doing that as something like, what can we establish that people haven't seen before? I think that's what's important for the MCU doing not only the mutants, but the Fantastic Four. Because we've yes. had, we've technically had four Fantastic Four movies in the last 20 or so years because there was the the one they made in the, what was that, I think in the, 90s, the 80s, the 90s yeah. that was never supposed to be released. And then you had, you know, Fantastic Four and Rise of the Silver Surfer with Jessica Alba and, and all them. And then the, the Josh Trank reboot, which was just a total fail. It made like a hundred million at the box office or some stupidly low number. So Marvel needs something fresh and interesting to, for this to even work. Take and on, I think yeah. it's certainly possible, especially with how campy the, um, the, the Tim story that directed the, the Jessica Alba ones, I think. Um, well, ironically, too, the Fantastic Four and now the I X-Men, saw that. I was just skimming through it. They're, they were in there. They're in there together. <laughs> and were, they're both, like, Jonathan Hickman was very responsible for the modern Fantastic Four. Uh, Reed Re- 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 Richards has a beard. Uh, yes. That's... I MCU uh, Reed Richards is going to have a beard. <laughs> yes. To me, that's that's like the most obvious thing coming out of this. And so Hickman may be the person that they're trusting to let's find ways to integrate the MCU stories with Fantastic Four and X-Men being different than what they did way back with Fox. Yeah, that would be very fun. Um, and even uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance came out right after San Diego Comic-Con and actually picked it up. And that was some of the other big news coming out of there. But even playing this game, like you can tell like, oh, you know, the X-Men are back. They, they never left. Like uh, there's all these X-Men already involved, you know, that you can play for, you know, Deadpool. If you pre-order the um, DLCs, um, you get them right off the bat. Nice. You know, instead of waiting to unlock him, you know, when you get to that part of the story. 
Um, but I, I had picked up Marvel Ultimate Alliance, uh, the Black Order, you know, when it came out and like, man, like I, I know you played the first two and like it's it's just as fun, you know, as those those first ones. Um, one of the things that they added that's a little different because, you know, you have that that top down view. If you are playing by yourself, you can switch to a closer third person. Nice. That's huge because that's the top view is kind of nice for side scroll mm-hmm. and everything like that. But when if you can get easy yep. control of that first yep. person. Yep. So if you want to play, if you want to play like in the third person, like you get that more expansive look. You know, of course, I'm, I'm playing with my wife. So we're we're still doing more of that top down kind of angle view, yes. you know, a la, you know, games like Diablo three and, and, and stuff like that. But it, it, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, what I really like is they seem to have incorporated a lot of save points because I feel like in the last one, if I remember correctly, they were a little more spread out. And then, you know, if you die or something like you have to go back and redo all this stuff. But like, you know, every time you you, do, you fight a boss or, or you fight like a group of bad guys, like there, there seems to be a save point. So like it's it's been really manageable, you know, which is nice. And that's cool. Yeah. And like all the characters, like it's it's so much fun. You know, like like Do they have the full Marvel universe pretty much at your disposal, or so not we of them? we are about I want to say f- between five to seven hours in. Uh, we did a couple of worlds, um, without going into too many spoilers. Like it seemed like the first after the Guardians of the Galaxy tutorial, I'd call it. They jump right into this thing with the raft, nice. so the Infinity Stones get dispersed around New York City. And the Green Goblin's in the raft, and he gets the Time Stone, and then just chaos ensues. So he unleashes all of the Spider-Man villains. So, like, right off the bat, you're fighting um, Electro, Venom, Mysterio, uh, Green Goblin. Gosh, what else was there? And then, you know, Mysterio ends up mind-controlling, you know, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, Spider-Gwen, and Miles Morales, who pop in you know, who are there from an alternate universe. So like you're, you're getting so many. So there's, there's 30 characters off in the, without the DLCs. And they already announced that the Marvel Knights DLC, which I think is the first one, is going to add the playable characters of Morbius, wow. Moon Knight, Blade. Oh man, I think there was one or two more. Like there's one more. Ghost Rider in there or anything too? Ghost or? Rider's in, I think the regular okay. um, side of the game, which I'm really excited about. Cause I mean, my three, three of my favorite characters are Deadpool, Blade and, and Ghost Rider. Um, so it seems like they're, you know, everything's okay. You know, you know, the X-Men are here. The Avengers are here. Blades here. Ghost Riders here. Um, Cloak gosh, and Dagger, Marvel Knights too? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember Cloak and Dagger being in there or not. Um, uh, we did unlock Venom, nice. which was cool. And he was, he had more of a classic look than he did um, versus Ultimate Alliance 2, which he had more of, um, what was it? Uh, when Scorpion, Scorpion had him, Venom. like yeah. that, that was the kind of, Venom. like, yeah, this is, yeah, this was more the Eddie Brock Venom. That's epic. Um, yeah, but, but you know, there's the X-Men, you know, there's, yes. there's Magneto, there are Beast is Beast, you know, and everything's connected. Together they're referencing again. the Hellfire Club, you know, like wow. there's, there's so many cool things. I, I don't want to spoil it too much. Uh, maybe in a few weeks we'll do, we'll do more of a, an Ultimate Alliance thing. Maybe Ken and I will, will play a little bit. Um, but yeah, super good game so far. Really excited to, to get through this yeah, and, and see dope. where, see where that takes us. Um, so, so, you know, I, I had planned on talking about the Mattel she dolls just very briefly. And yes. you surprised me when you said you watched the first few episodes of yes. she on Netflix. Yeah. Kayla stumbled onto it. And I said, you know what? Let's check this out. she It's like that. No, no way. We used to watch she Christmas special mm-hmm. all the time when she was growing up. Okay. And oh, okay. So, like, that was one of our favorite traditions to do Christmas time. Was like, okay, let's throw on the Shira Christmas special. Okay. And um, the new series started up, and she goes, "Hey, you want to check this out?" He goes, "Sure, let's check it out." We used to always watch that together. Let's you know check this out. And mm-hmm. It was fun. And I said too. I got three episodes in, and I had to go nice. start doing some other stuff. But when I went to work in summertime, so she doesn't always come to work with us. She hangs up, and hangs around, and does some home time stuff too. Mm-hmm. And, she binged through the rest of it pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of going, man, now I got to, you know, uh, she, she enjoyed it that much. And it was a fun. I love the animation. I kind of like the more in-depth story tell of, uh, oh, my gosh, dude, Princess. Adora. Thank you, dude. See, my, my brain fart there. I apologize, <laughs> dude. Like Adora, like with Hordak, mm-hmm. thinking that the rest of these people here are terrorists rather mm-hmm. than being repressed. Yep. And that was kind of a fun little transition story of like points of view mm-hmm. where Adora starts learning about the fact of like that. Not everything as it precedes propaganda yeah. can change. Absolutely. I mean, and the they touched on it thinks. in the original because like uh, this was, this is my honest 
for Shira experience. And um, my wife was, you know, more into it, you know, the original when she was younger, yeah. but like, you know, it, there are differences. And so like, she had me watch the first episode of the original one. And like, I couldn't so get quick. into it. Like, yeah, it, it is. It is quick. The original version of this it. one is, is a lot more in depth and it was really interesting. What she really was like struggling with herself. And, like, Absolutely. That, how can this be? Like Hordak was, you know, her role model. Mm-hmm. And then to have like the fact of seeing like that, it is, it's almost like your parent, Finding out that, you know, your parents, a major criminal or not even criminal. It's like that just, you know, you're, 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 you're the, the son or daughter of a political leader. You're, you're the evil that, empire, you know, Darth, yeah. Darth Vader's your dad, but like, he's the bad guy. Yes. You know? <laughs> and with, like, you got to grow up with Vader. Yeah. You know yes, what I mean? exactly. Like imagine Luke Skywalker growing up with Vader and then all mm-hmm. of a sudden this rebellion comes to him and says, dude, your dad's screwed up in the head, man. He's repressing the whole galaxy. Yeah. And, uh. Like, almost like Anakin and Emperor Palpatine. Absolutely. Unfortunately, Anakin stayed with Palpatine. Mm-hmm. And Adora says, yeah, I, I see the point. I got to, you know, fight mm-hmm. with you against this. Because yep. this is not good for, you know, for the people of this nation, of this world. And I think in her relationship with Ketra, too, because, you know, they grew up and they were so yes. close. And, you know, obviously, if you watch the originals, like, Ketra's, Ketra's one of the bad guys. You know, Ketra's, Ketra stays with the Horde, you know. So, like, just, just exploring that dynamic and... And I entrapped is such an interesting character. She's just, she's not even necessarily, it's the evil characters too that are so well developed, you yes. know, as, as you, as you watch it between, they're you know, not Catra, drones. They're no. like the real people. Catra knows what she's doing is wrong. And, you know, she was pretty much, you know, mentally abused by Shadow Weaver and is starting to understand that manipulation and entrapped like she doesn't really, to really see anything she's doing is bad. Like she just wants the ability to do her experiments. Yeah. You know, like it's yes. not, it's not about good or bad. Like she just wants to she learn wants to about her science. science and it's, it's really interesting. All the relationships are really well handled. You know, I've been just right through season two, uh, when it came out as well, really looking forward to season three coming out next month, especially like, you know, there was a little cliffhanger for, nice. for those of you who, who saw it and won't say what, but, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you're starting it. Well, maybe we can do a, a Shira episode yeah, as well. But just do see the rest of it then. Yeah, too. I was hoping to have some merchandise, and they fin- Mattel finally unveiled uh, some Shira dolls. So we got Princess Adora, we've got Catra, and we've got Bo and, and Glimmer. Uh, I don't understand why we don't have any pops yet. Yes, that'll happen. I'm sure, but yes, like, where are they? Yes. Give me my pops. Exactly. Come on, Mattel. Come on, Funko. <laughs> what are we doing? Um, speaking of of pops. Um, the biggest news I think that Funko put out was they're doing these board games. That is awesome. That's the two. Something like where you see those little miniature keychains that have been mm-hmm. put out. Yeah. Those are perfect board game pieces. Yeah. And I, it's like there's times too, like when you're playing little games, it's like that. You know what? When I'm playing Monopoly, I want to pull out that keychain thing to put that yeah, on my Monopoly absolutely. game. I, I used to, yeah. we used to do that. We used to, uh, like back in the day when we play Hero Heroclix, we would yes. take our Heroclix figures and just use them as our Monopoly tokens because like I'd rather be Spider-Man or Deadpool or yes. whatever. I don't want to be a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was partial to the uh, to yeah. the th- um, thumb. Uh, oh my gosh, what's it the called? Thimble. The thimble. Thank yes. you. <laughs> I was always the thimble. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. The shoe, the dog, the little car. It's like everybody wanted to be a little race car, or it's like yeah. that. Uh, but it'd be cool. Like you can make your own little pieces and Funko. The keychains are perfect for that. And now the board games coming out. Yeah. So apparently they're gonna be like strategy games, but like I mean, off of you know popular properties. Yes. You know? Dude, that'll be kind of awesome. Like, didn't uh, oh, say IDW is doing a lot of these games already, where they're using their properties that they oh, have are in, they? The, in the board games. Too. Interesting. Like the Turtles board game is a Stranger Things yeah. Dungeons Dragons game. Yeah, card and, games uh, and strategy games, like they're, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying they were, you know, never popular, but I mean they're on they're, the up and up with all these licenses, you know, and stuff. Yeah, they're in their new golden age right now. Yeah, I mean, look at, I mean, Munchkin. You know, yes. it was a game that's been around for a pretty long time, from what I understand. And now there's a Marvel license for it, and there's Marvel expansions for it. And Munchkin's an incredibly fun game. Yes. Um, and adding the Marvel stuff adds like a few more rules that make it like even more fun. Like there's there's Infinity Stones, and if you collect all the Infinity Stones, you like you automatically win. Oh, so nice. Like it's like impossible to to do, you know, yes. kind of thing. But like you can have all the powers. Like you can get Captain America's shield. You can get Wolverine's claws. You know, and like it's it's incredibly fun. You know, world builder board games. Yeah. 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 Like Marvel, like Marvel Legends. You, you work together to fight a bad guy. Like, ah, oh, let's go take down Loki or Apocalypse or Magneto or Thanos or whatever. You know, like incredibly fun. Yes. Right, so the, the board games that Funko are doing, they're starting with, with DC and there's going to be like, there's a Batman, looks like there's a Harley Quinn, a Joker, 
I was Harry Potter, Rick and Morty. Right? I'm, I'm personally not into it, but I, I see that there's a market for that. And the Golden Girls for, yes. for some reason, just to round it out. I know. I love the variety of demographics. There. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like uh, I said, Rick and Morty, totally different than the Golden Girls audience. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to be B. Arthur. <laughs> exactly, dude. Now, you can start crossing over the games. Like, Rick and Morty slides into the Golden Girls hey, universe. Why not? I guess, be... I guess that's possible, right? The, yes. Isn't that what they do? They, they time travel or, or interdimensional travel. I, I only watched, like, a couple episodes. I couldn't get into it. Mm-hmm. Fun, fun, fun stuff either way on it, though. And uh, I, like, I said, too, it was like that. Comic-Con had... One of my favorite things at the show, too, were the revelation of the Red Sith Troopers. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. I know, like, and the internet is, like, out. losing their mind over over these these troopers. Yes. Because, I mean, I, from what I understand, like, there were Sith Troopers in the old canon. So, like, this is the first time we're, we're getting something that's now here relevant and, and within the movies. Yes. No less. Like, this isn't even just something in a novel. Well, even the type of thing, too, is that, like, that supposedly, I thought the world of Sith were done in this last franchise mm-hmm. and the, the, the fifth order first order first order. Mm-hmm. Okay. Didn't they have a new name besides Sith? What are they calling their force users? Is it just the first order now? N- nothing. Nothing. So, um, Snoke is a dark side user. Okay. But not a but, Sith though. So that's what they're saying. Okay. So I, they just released a snow comic. and I don't know if they delve any more into that, but like, there's some secrets going on. Like, I, I think there's more to... What, well, do you think these guys are the protectors of Palpatine? Yes, I think it relates to that. And I think that's going to be freaking awesome to see these Sith troopers come out, like, in an order, and then Palpatine is uh, following behind Unbelievable. Them. So, like, I, if there's a whole set of troopers for for Sith, yes. I mean, what are we doing? Are we are we ushering in a new age uh, where there's... We're breaking the rule of two and we're actually going to have multiple Sith, just like the days of um, like the old Republic or, or before that. That's going to break a whole Jedi order. I, I, I think that, yeah, I like come out of nowhere again. I, I think that's why. I mean, it is a cool looking trooper, but I think it's the implications of there's Sith troopers. What does this mean for the movies and everything yes. going forward? It's the two that are bringing back the stuff people love the most, the Sith and the Jedi at the end of this franchise here. Because, like, they showed at the end of the last movie, you know, these other young Force learners, mm -hmm. you know, the kid that moved the, was it the broom? Yes. At the end of the movie Mm -hmm. there, I'm going, oh, the Jedis are, you know, rising. Well, the Force is awakening. Yes. So it it doesn't even have to be the Jedi. Like, I mean, they could end up being on the dark side. You know, if the Force is awakening, could mean either side. You know, this kid doesn't. This kid could be like the next freaking Vader. You know, for all. and I think that's the point. I and I the throughout the the original trilogy and the uh, the prequel trilogy, they're talking about bringing balance to the Force. I mean, wouldn't balance to the Force be like the actual return of the Jedi Order and the Sith Order? <laughs> It'd be so freaking awesome! Yeah. So many good story tells they could go from there going forward on it. I'm. I know I say what you will about the last Jedi. I mean, like I know personally it was subpar, but I'm not going to let that bother me. But like, I think episode nine is going to determine how Future. good this new trilogy actually was. Yes. That's the questions true. answered and the mythology that they're going to add to this. Well, it's the opening of the Pandora's box to the rest of the universe after this is done. I'm this calling it right now. This is going to be the first like two billion plus Star Wars, you know, box you office. If it breaks end game. You, yeah, after a few months of it, be, but here's the yes. thing: I saw this article today that Disney just set a record with while well, Lion King is in theaters right now, approaching a billion dollars. Wow! Disney as a whole, with all of the studios that they own, they've they made about seven point five billion dollars altogether. Jeez. Now it's only July. It's the end of July. You know what else is left this year? Star Wars. There's Star Wars, you know, which is going to be an easy 1.5 to two billion dollars. There's Frozen Two. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, and sure. Maleficent. Wow. Disney is going to make ten to eleven billion dollars this year well, on, on movies Story alone. Four. They yeah, yeah that's too. yeah, that's that's part of the yeah. the seven billion that they're that they're currently. Disney's going to break ten billion dollars this year, and that's wow. a re- it was a record at seven. Yes, now we're getting like <laughs> close to ten to eleven by the time. This Unbelievable. Year's over. Well, the best part about it is like that people said, man, Disney made some bad investments. Uh, no. Not at all. No. <laughs> right, four, dude? four billion for Lucasfilm. Like they, they made it back already. And they're just adding no. Fox to this just now, too. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And all these licenses, like isn't Terminator coming out next year, too? 
Is was that, that this year? Is that part of Fox? Yes. Oh, I didn't is, even is, realize is, that. Is, is that considered is that Disney's money yet, or is that still going to be? Well, it's kind of no, no, it is. It is Disney's money. Fox is Disney now, and we're about to have uh, Avatar. Yes, movies wow. as well. There's four Avatar movies, and it's just going to be like it's you know the best investment Disney's ever made is getting Lucasfilm and Fox. Mm-hmm. No question, hands down. Yeah. Towards the fact of like, oh, then, then there's no way they're going to ruin any of that either, because that's yeah. one thing I do notice, like that. Disney owning Marvel for the past like is it ten years, fifteen years now. Like Disney years. owning Marvel, so it was a little after. I think it was a little after two thousand eight, wasn't it? So like two thousand nine. So yeah, I guess about, about ten years. years. Yeah, dude. And it's just I haven't seen any mess ups yet through yeah. any of the Marvel movies, and the Star Wars movies didn't do bad at the box offices as much as people want to complain. As you said about Last Jedi being such a oh man, that movie was questionable, but they they did well at the box offices. Yeah, I mean, and to me, like, I mean, you could be upset about whatever about The Last Jedi, but nothing really happened that, like, first of all, nothing really happened in the movie. Like, the the Resistance made it, like, a few planets away while they were running away the whole movie, and, like, nothing really happened. Kylo Ren could be lying and probably is lying about Ray's parents, and, like, I mean, unfortunately, he's just more just insignificant than anything interesting. Yes. I mean, if you like it, that's great. That's fine. I mean, there was some there was some cool stuff for sure. Um, it was a bridge but, movie to the last yeah, part. Episode nine is just going to be jam packed. And like, I'm sure you didn't see because you were at Comic-Con. Um, I was watching a Kevin Smith interview that IGN was streaming live from San Diego. Oh, wow. And JJ brought him on set. And he, you know, he wanted to check out. I don't, I don't know if he gets a cameo or something because, you know, people get stupid cameos in, in all these Star Wars movies. But, you know, he's friends with J.J. Abrams and stuff. And they're like, oh, you know, what's he asked J.J. He was saying, like, what's in this last room? And he's like, oh, this is the last scene in episode nine. And he's like, oh, let me go check it out. And he's and Kevin Smith said, you know, J.J. just you know looked at me as a friend. He's like, like, Kevin, like, you don't want to do that. Like, you want to experience this as a fan, and it's going to blow your mind. Wow. That's I, awesome. I, I got chills. So I was like, whoa. So, like, Kevin Smith, like, decided not to do it because he's yeah. just going to – JJ told him, like, experience this as a fan. Like, you yes. do not want this spoiled. So, like, what is that? What could that possibly be? I know, dude. That's the best part, too, on that is, like, there's so many different things that – I don't want spoilers for this movie. Mm-hmm. I'm going to like try to stay away yep. from as many trailers as possible. Mm-hmm. But I saw the opening trailer, you know, that was cool. I cannot argue about what I enjoyed. Dino you know, was awesome in that trailer, especially watching Ray dive over the ship. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of going, oh boy, this is going to be so much fun. And I just don't want any spoilers at all for this movie. I, I started getting choked up when they showed Carrie Fisher mm-hmm. hugging Ray. Yes. And then at the end, there's the Palpatine laugh, and I almost lost my mind. Like, I was like, what? No. Dude, and I, and I'll no. Be- I'll be so ticked off if all of a sudden you see Ray join Palpatine at the end of this movie. That's not going to happen. And that would be like kind of like, oh my gosh, that's a twist I don't need to see coming. But that doesn't make sense. Like that thing is ruined. That's not what's going to happen. Because, yeah, the, the twist is she's a Skywalker, whether it's Luke's kid. But I, I think it's she's Kylo's sister. She's Luke. I mean, she's a Leia and Han's kid. And Leia hit her for whatever reason because she had a feeling she knew she had a vision or something that and will turn to the dark side. And you've heard the theories that the Skywalker lineage is Palpatine lineage. Sure, and that's fine. The comics showed that, you know, Palpatine manipulated the Force yeah, to, to create cool. Anakin, and that's fine. And that's even more of a reason to bring Palpatine back as the... It's the final bad because yeah. who he was in the you know episode one, two, and three, and he had a big presence in four, five, and six. Like you gotta have him tie this all up, tie, tie it all up. Uh, the original you know legends novels. Now uh, it was revealed that Palpatine was making clones of his body yes. to transfer his consciousness. So like really, you know, like there's there's already been stories that have been accepted that Palpatine did survive. Post Return of the Jedi because he just got thrown down a thing. Yeah, and with all the stuff with the mini chlorians and creating life and stuff, like why not? Also, Luke Skywalker he got rescued by his allies. Mm-hmm. What would keep Palpatine from having you know an Imperial shuttle down there? Like he's like you know the beacons, obviously to all of his people. Mm-hmm. You know the Force type of thing. Like hey, let me send out a beacon to have my my people come and rescue me as I'm falling down this pit there. Obviously, I mean, Palpatine is the kind of person to have a contingency plan. You know, yes. he talk, when you talk about Darth Plagueis and manipulating mini chlorians to create life, I mean, that was, that was one of the main themes in Anakin's fall to the dark side. You know, it's the reason why he killed his master. And has he been hiding this ability from Vader this whole time? Like who knows what he's been doing yes. with it? Is Snoke just a failed clone of Palpatine? Palpatine? 
Yeah, yeah, Who's Snoke? Wait, Nobody even explained that yet. <laughs> I can't believe it's only a little over four months away. I'm so excited. Yes. I'm so excited. <laughs> the two thirds are done. <laughs> this year is almost here. So before we delve into the best news, in my humble opinion, of the Marvel Hall H, uh, DC was pretty absent from from Comic Con this year, but they did do the world premiere of Teen Titans versus Teen Titans Go, <laughs> <laughs> which is now out on on Blu-ray, from what I understand. But like, I love Teen Titans Go, and I know a lot of people are upset that they canceled the original Teen Titans. All that, but like, Teen Titans Go is really just its own parody, and it's not meant to be taken like Seriously, as a superhero yeah. series. And I like, I loved the Teen. Have you seen the Teen Titans Go movie yet? I need to go see that still. Dude. I it's want to see that. It's so, so funny. Bad. I mean, it's it's yes. really just parody. And like the best parody out of the the Teen Titans Go movie was the fact that they cast Nicolas Cage as Superman because you know that's the throwback. <laughs> it's a Kevin Smith deal. Yeah, yeah, yes. exactly. That's that's the throwback to when they were gonna do um, Nicholas Cage. Nicolas Cage. Or no, was it a Tim Burton doing that? Well, was Tim Burton? I remember like Kevin Smith submitted a script. Uh, for Nicolas Cage yeah. and Superman, but probably Tim Burton would have been the producer, the director, right? or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, like he he got to he finally got to play Superman. Nice. You know, uh, it's, it's, there's there's so many smart things actually in Teen Titans Go. Like if you really give it a chance and just appreciate it for what it is. But uh, Teen Titans versus Teen Titans Go. You know, they're dealing with this whole thing with the multiverse. The original Teen Titans from the 2003 series get zapped into this. You know their universe and they're dealing with both of the universes trigons yes. and like i mean it's ridiculous but i mean it, it might it's be awesome fun. though yeah you know, so too the best popcorn fun you can have watching a movie is like that watching beast boy do you know what i mean interact mm. with the other beast boy and then mm. robin i love how the starfire of the teen titans go universe looking at the teen titans one going mm. oh man he's even cuter than do you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> then, how can you get any better looking than he already is you yep. know type of thing yep. but just kind of cracks me up about how they, you know, they're, they're perfectly play off of each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think it'll be fun. And I, I look forward to, to seeing it, but Marvel had such a presentation. And like yes. I said, at the beginning of this episode, I think this is the, the most uh, mind blowing set of movies that they announced since they announced the slate that included infinity war part one, and part two with, you know, Thor Ragnarok and Kevin and all that. Like, yes. like phase four is really shaping up and, Man, oh, what was the what was the first thing? So like Eternals. Eternals. So like we knew that was coming. Yes. We knew there were Eternals coming, but we got the cast. You know, we know Angelina Jolie is playing. Um, and what man? Oh, she plays Athena. Uh, Athena. Okay, thank so you. Richard Madden is Icarus. Uh, man, I am going to pronounce this wrong, so forgive me. Uh, Ma Dong Siok is the Forgotten One. Uh, Sama Hayek is Ajak, and uh, Brian is it Tyree Henry is Fastos. Okay. Um, and I was reading a little bit about Eternals online, and mm -hmm. it is. It's just like the gods of, you know, almost like that's almost like Greek god type of representation yep. on it. But, like, but they were created by the Celestials, right? Yes. Or at least imbued with powers from the Celestials, something and along been those around lines. for like generations mm -hmm. in, inside of society. I think the most exciting part about this is we're taking these steps toward like the cosmic beings and the celestials and yes. like it's really fun part of the mythology that I was hoping we would get to uh, before, you know, end game. But like, you know, this could be steps toward the living tribunal and eternity yes. and death. death. And man, this, this could be so much fun. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait. It's like they're, they're universe building or not, not even just, yeah, universe building. It's mm -hmm. like, they're just going so far. Like I said too, like the first phase was obviously earth. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the second phase was obviously space with Guardians of the Galaxy. And then the third phase, obviously, it's like, okay, this this universe is at threat by Thanos. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like phase four is getting into the fact of like, oh, yeah, there's multiple versions of our universe. And there's things that we can explore that keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be fun to see, like, how... Like, how far into the iceberg are we? Yep, absolutely. And like, we're just at the tip of it. The Black Widow was, I think, the sec the second thing that they announced. Doctor so we knew Strange we knew that was two. coming. I love Black Widow, so I'm excited that we get another go around Scarlett Johansson. But yes. they showed a little bit of footage, and we're we are officially getting Taskmaster. Yes. And from the description, they said that his helmet looked Ultimate a little less like a skull and more like an Iron Man helmet. Okay. That's cool. But he still had the shield and sword and a, and a hood, I guess, uh, which was cool. But I'm, I'm just glad we are 
getting the the uh, the shield and stuff. Uh, but apparently, David Harbor is playing Red Guardian. Oh, nice! Wow. So, I mean, we got you know that whole connection with because like, he was married to Black Widow, I believe, right? And he's more or less kind of like the Soviet Captain, Captain America. America. Yeah. Um, so really interesting. Um, because I as soon as they announced that, like I, I looked that up on eBay to buy it too, and, and that wasn't happening. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, Damn that's it. funny because it looks almost exactly like Captain America. It's got a red outfit with a white yeah, star. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I'm like what? some interesting, and yes. plus we're having uh the y- y- oh my goodness, I'm gonna say it wrong, y- Yelena, Yelena Black Widow, the, yes. the blonde Black Widow. So like some interesting characters coming out of this, and I really hope they don't throw away Taskmaster because no. I hope he didn't just die. This is his one thing because Taskmaster is such a cool character. Like. I hope he comes around to to Marvel Cinematic Universe, Deadpool, maybe yeah, to the Avengers. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that that would be an, an absolute such a cool character. And they kind of, I mean, she survived, but they kind of ghosted her during the movie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and there there have been rumors of a Shang Chi movie, but oh, yes. they confirmed. they draw. Yeah, they not only confirmed it, but it's called Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and yes. we're going to have the real Mandarin. But that'll be freaking awesome. I love how they connect the Mandarin over into Shang-Chi rather than Iron Man, too. Do you? Like, I'm really disappointed. By really? That. Okay. Yes. I mean, I'm glad he's going to be in and we're going to see him. But, like, I really hope there's some heavy Iron Man implications because it's with all of the great stuff we got out of Robert Downey Jr., it's so incredibly disappointing. We did not have a proper, Mandarin. you know, Mandarin. I mean, if you want to do it differently, have Fing Fang Foom in there and then, you know, do a double, you know, That's villain true. kind of a deal. So, I mean, it's cool that we're getting him, but man, it really sucks we're not getting a, the way an Iron Man, Iron Man, you mean. know. I mean, I think. And maybe they'll tie in Hawkeye a little bit into that then, too. You know, with the Imagine Ronin side of it, Shang Chi. Oh. It's like Hawkeye first appeared in Iron Man. Interesting. And then more or less have him be kind of. You know, the the guide explaining mm-hmm. what the Ten Rings are because of what he explored in Japan while he was Ronin. Mode. That's a good point. Well, they announced a Hawkeye Disney Plus show nice. you know, as part of this panel, and it's going to introduce Kate Bishop. And as soon as I saw that, epic. I looked it up, but I guess Kate Bishop is still, that first appearance is still up from the rumors of her being an endgame. But we're looks like we're finally going to get uh, Kate Bishop. Uh, within all of this there's got to be someone out there leaking this information to the public on the internet because there's like the way these books jump up before the announcements are made Mm -hmm. it's kind of where you've heard rumors about kate bishop being part of the cinematic universe for almost two years Mm -hmm. now yeah and so someone probably leaks out the information like here dude here's a list of things that are be down the road and Mm -hmm. maybe it's a reporter maybe it's someone that's just kind of you know, a comic shop owner where one of these guys shops at mm-hmm. and say, hey, what, what what kind of scoop do you got for me? It's like, what what books do I need to have for my or customers they, or down they the just, line? They just see them buying yes. Kate Bishop stuff and, yeah. and whatnot. I remember one time a customer came in my store during Glendale Glitters mm-hmm. and she was asking, do you have any Runaways graphic novels? And I'm kind of, yeah, we got them right over here. And let's go. So, wow, that's interesting. I don't get too many people ask about Runaway graphic novels. Are a big Brian K. Vaughn fan? And she goes, not really, kind of. I can't really say too much about it. And I go, what? Okay, so wait a minute. Though. So you don't know about how great the series is? One of the best series ever written by Brian K. Vaughn. Uh-huh. And she goes, well, actually, I'm doing a script submission for a TV show. And so I don't know if she was the one that got the job to script Runaways. Huh. But she was researching oh. Runaways storytelling because she wanted to submit a script because there was a more or less a script call. Wow. For Runaways TV. Oh, interesting. Series. So I bet yeah. you that's happening in other comic shops around the country. Yeah, and, for sure. Why not? Especially if it's in, you know, around Marvel Studios in Hollywood. I'm mm-hmm. sure there's stores that are getting people pretty regularly that are submitting script ideas for yep. the TV shows to see which one gets accepted or for the mm-hmm. movies even. Yeah. And they're going to their comic shop to get reference material. Absolutely. And probably my most anticipated or no. Yeah, for phase four, yeah, as far as the phase four stuff goes. They announced the Doctor Strange sequel, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Nice. That's going to be a team-up movie with a Scarlet the Witch. Winner? It's going to be Nightmare for That's sure. That's my theory, too. There's no, way, there's no way it's not going to be Nightmare. Which is going to be freaking awesome. That's who I wanted in the first in the first place. Yes, you know? especially with what they did with Mysterio and the mm-hmm. Spider-Man movie. Yeah. What so, they can do with Nightmare will be insane. So it's got to be that times, times ten and whacked out. But there's going to be horror themes uh, to this from from what they were saying, you know, at the, at the panel, but yes. I mean, oh, Dude. 
a nightmare on Doctor Strange Street. <laughs> right? <laughs> But, uh, you know, and another one of the best parts of this is that, you know, the multiverse of of madness. So even though, you know, Mysterio confirmed it and then unconfirmed it by being a fraud that there's multiverse, like now we're getting it from Doctor Strange that there is a multiverse. Um, So, you know, the possibilities are endless now. Yes. Do you think that will be the lead in for the what if cartoon or is it the what if cartoon going to be the lead in for the Doctor Strange movie? Uh, That's a good question. Huh. I don't know. I just I guess it really depends on what comes what comes first. I I think they're going to be independent enough of each other. But let's see, that's a uh, twenty twenty one. Yeah, it's going to be right around the same time as the what if. You know, I believe. Um, but they announced the cast for that that what if show, and yes. man, and we got a uh, Jeffrey Wright is playing playing a Watu, um, and then so many people uh, are just reprising right their roles from the from the MCU. But this is going to focus on. Uh, on the Infinity Saga, so Marvel Phase 1 through 3. Um, a little after they announced it, within the What If logo, you know, there's there's comic panels within the the red... Um, Marvel logo? Yeah. And you know what somebody saw within there? Do you, do you know? I haven't heard this They yet. saw Zombie Captain America. Oh, my god. So gosh. they think they're going to do a Marvel, Marvel Zombies, Zombies episode. <laughs> that, that would be, be cool. That would be epic. Yes, I love the Marvel Zombies. It's ironic, too, because Robert Kirkman wrote the first two Marvel mm-hmm. Zombies miniseries yeah, how that, huh? and how many people love Walking Dead, how much fun it is to have Marvel Zombies written with no rules that the Walking Dead apply to. Yeah, I mean, I mean it was so much fun watching pure zombie chaos. Yeah. Like where you know the people were trying to fight off the the zombie taking over the brain. Like that was one of the main things was Black mm-hmm. Panther and Hank Pym mm-hmm. trying to find cures during that story before you know, they were completely taken over by the zombie virus. There was, there so was, well there done. were some fun stories, you know, within the Marvel zombies arcs. Um, you know, even, even Marvel zombies, Deadpool leaked into the six one six. And that's why Deadpool. we had Deadpool later, yes. you know, like there's, there was some fun stuff. Um, I mean, as long as it's not part of the Marvel cinematic universe, yes, let's, let's, let's bring this the in if. the what if. Yes. Yeah. Like so that's, that's fine. Technically and, that's what it is in the first place. It's like, absolutely. it's a what if universe. It is because yeah, an alter universe. I yeah. mean, that's, that's what the, the what ifs are all about. Right. Uh, the next movie they announced was Thor Love and Thunder, directed by Taika Waititi. I honestly don't know how I feel about this one. Jane Foster being brought in as Thor? Yeah, already. Well, I mean, we didn't do Beta Ray Bill or Thunderstrike or anything, yes. you know? Well, with him being the Lebowski Thor right now, is he worthy to be Thor? Why not? Yes, like yes, the, because he, yeah, he, grabbed, he grabbed the hammer. So they said this takes place before Guardians 3. Oh, it does. So that's confirmed. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think he's going to lose the weight. Obviously, Jane Foster is confirmed uh, to play female Thor. How this plays out, because, you know, part of the story they're saying is Valkyrie is looking for her queen, you know, of of Asgard. Um, I don't. It seemed like he got right on the ship, so I don't know how Chris Hemsworth is playing a part. Like, it's a little unclear on what's exactly what's exactly going to happen here yes you know and what is what is love and thunder because i looked it up and like there was no story arc called that but i guess it's based on the story arc that jane foster does become thor okay um that was put out by um, jason Aaron. yes yes it's, it's, it's based on that uh story arc from what i understand yeah, more or less it's just jane foster dealing with cancer and it was the time where thor wasn't worthy Mm-hmm. to uh you know hold the hammer in his mind after what happened in oh what was that original sin uh, where yeah. nick fury whispered something in his ear and he said what and then he you know dropped the hammer type of thing mm-hmm. he didn't feel worthy anymore and there's so you're saying first, that's that's where they're going with fat thor is is doing this unworthy thing maybe you know I mean? that's my my guess possibly and jane foster was able to take on the moniker because if you um, think about Jane Foster. I mean, everything she does in her life is like a worthy type of person. I mean, she's a doctor. She deals with people that are struggling with life and death and trying to keep them upbeat and upspirited that there's a chance, there's a hope. There is, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. She's dealing with cancer herself. And it's just like that. I, her, She's the perfect worthy being to be Thor inside of that Jason Aaron story well, with Mjolnir destroyed within the Marvel cinematic universe. What are they going to do? You know, like, yeah. I guess they're going to, I guess we, we introduced, um, 
is it Itri or uh, I'm sure I'm not, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, but I mean, we saw him make Stormbreaker. Yes. I mean, I guess he could just make another year. It was Mjolnir has been destroyed in the comics. Yeah. So obviously it had to have been reforged, right? Yes. That's what I said too. It was like that. I haven't read everything in Jason Aaron's Thor mm-hmm. stories telling wise, but uh, I think it is a different Thor hammer than what it's been before. Really? So it's not, it's not Mjolnir. <sighs> Dude, you got me on that one, unfortunately. Okay. I'll have to look up that. That's fair. Well, yes, I mean, well, Stormbreaker is running around, and there's rumors yes. of Beta Ray Bill. Yes. So is he going to keep it, bring it to space, and then they're going to find Beta Ray? I mean, there's lots of questions. So I guess we're we're just going to have to see. But, I mean, that that was the, the Thor announcement. I mean, I know everyone loves Ragnarok, but I personally did not like all the humor and stuff, and I really wish Taika Waititi wasn't doing this. Yeah. And I know that's a very unpopular opinion. Um. I don't know. I just wanted something a little more along the lines of what Kenneth Branagh, you know, was was bringing to the table. Um, I said it'd be fun to see how it goes. And I said, hopefully that it's not one of those things where people be like, oh, man, that was where they jumped their shark. Yes. So al- alongside all of the movies, they did a lot of uh, their Disney Plus announcements, which we touched on Hawkeye. We touched on the what if um, and then they're going to do the you know cap not captain america the winter soldier in the falcon series and they confirmed baron zemo's coming back and he's got a costume yes. uh, comic accurate costume which is really exciting that we're we're finally going to get that out of baron yeah, zemo the pink and purple's coming back yeah all right, <laughs> right? yeah let's do it yeah. perfect i mean if you're going to bring him back you like you you better be doing it, it with a gold crown on his head uh-huh he's sure so, such an epic costume uh and then they WandaVision, which is going to be the Scarlet Witch and and Vision uh, Disney Plus show. Mm-hmm. So Fe- Kevin Feige confirmed, or Feige uh, confirmed, that this is, of all the TV shows, this is going to have the biggest implications within the Marvel Universe as a whole. Wow. So. Hmm, what do you think that's going to be? Well, we know this takes place in the 50s, and we know the only reason this takes place in the 50s is because of Scarlet Witch's reality warping powers, which is why the Visions comes back because the Vision is dead, right? Yes. So what does this sound like? This sounds like no more mutants, but... House of M. Yes. But what if we're doing this in reverse? Well, to bring in the mutants. Yeah, why not? Yes. She's, she's, she's obviously losing her mind. She's made this 1950 setting. She's she's brought back the Vision. Maybe she'll, she'll do the whole thing with the Vision family because she's just losing her mind over losing, like her brother and and the vision like she doesn't know what to do now and then what if she just snaps and maybe this has implications with the multiverse of madness and maybe that's why nightmare comes on and maybe there's so many possibilities i mean it's it's exciting to think about you know that'd be awesome it's almost like it said like that no more mutants or she's or you know it's almost like no more troubles Mm -hmm. and just it starts all to like mutants become the next step in evolution because of her willing it to be Mm-hmm. Super, super, super exciting to see what's going to happen with Vision and the Scarlet Witch. Absolutely. Um, and before before they wrapped up, they dropped my favorite thing. Oh, yes. Come, oh wait, before, before I even say that, he said, we do not have time to talk about mutants, but it was just nice to hear him talk about mutants. But they confirmed not only Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and Black Panther 2, but they're going to do a Fantastic Four movie. And then... Mahershala Ali came on stage and like, oh, he's going to have his own movie. What is it? And he put on a blade hat. <laughs> exactly. And we're finally getting blade in the MCU. And I'm so excited. Yes. It's going to be freaking awesome. And it's funny, too. They didn't do the Midnight Suns. They're bringing him into the mainstream storytell. I'm so excited. And it's uh, pretty sure it's going to be a movie. I don't know if they explicitly said it, but they did not say it was a Disney Plus show. So it's got to be. Uh, a movie and what an incredible actor to, to be the MCU blade. And like, yes. even though he was cotton mouth, in Luke Cage. Yes. I mean, it just goes to show you, like, they really don't care about the... The, the crossovers. The, yeah, the Netflix yeah. shows at all. So, like, I mean, I'm sad that he was already Cottonmouth, but he is such a good actor. I'm so excited. I, I didn't know who I wanted to even play Blade at this point. And they you found know? somebody. Well, because, yes. I mean, it couldn't be Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes is too old. Wesley Snipes was never on the table. Like, I, I see all these people complain, like, oh, why isn't it Wesley Snipes? Like, he's too old. Yes. These movies, uh, the, the new They're line movies, movies. Uh, have nothing to do with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, Wesley Snipes was never going to be Blade in the MCU. No, absolutely not. He There's could be no someone way. else. But Mahershala is a fantastic guy who is amazing as Cottonmouth. Probably one of the top three 
uh, villains, villains of the MC. No, just of, the, of everything. Wow. Everything, in, yes. in my opinion. Yes. Um, he was phenomenal. He was so interesting. I mean, he's just a good, he's a great actor. And in the Green, the green Book, or what, whatever it was, and he, he's won a couple of, uh, you know, Academy Awards. He's such a good actor. And I mean, if you really pull up, you know, a picture of comic book Blade with his, you know, with his uh, really defined, like, cheekbones and stuff, like, he he's like he's got Blade. a great look, you know, for... For Blade, I'm, I'm so excited to see you know what what he can do for that, um, man. And who could play Whistler? Who's going to be his Whistler? Oh, uh, can, can we have Lee Neeson play Whistler? That you would know, be like, awesome. I think that would be. Can you have that? Why yes. not? That who else awesome. is he going to play? You know, I mean, you know, Lee Neeson's already you know getting old. I mean, he likes his Taken movies and all that stuff anyway. I, I would like to see him play Whistler. I mean, that would be Chris awesome. Christopherson did a fantastic job, but. I think it would be a cool dynamic and two fantastic actors. Oh man. Like I blade is what I'm most excited for, yes. you know, in the MCU going forward. Well, that's one thing too, is like Marvel doesn't mess around. Or nope. Disney doesn't mess around with making mm-hmm. these movies epic in any way possible. And I've not seen many actor misses mm-hmm. on any of these movies that Marvel put out over the years. I mean, I can't think of anybody. I said, Oh, that was totally off base. Do you, do you have any like people that you feel that were, miscast in any of the disney marvel movies you know yet? no because i mean even though ben kingsley was a phenomenal mandarin until that stupid trevor reveal yes and that's not his fault that was the director was but but up until that point he was awesome he was intimidating i was like wow yes. like this is a little different but like it like i'm embracing it you know like it was something that we haven't really he was like a terrorist villain you know which was it was just a little different yeah you know marvel marvel i think has been really killing it with the casting i mean like i kind of had a problem with zendaya as as mj but i mean she's michelle so i mean i can't really be too upset but no i mean tom holland i think is the best spider-man i mean robert downey jr and chris evans like are so iconic in their respective roles that no one's gonna want to do that you know (laughs) after after this uh so blade's not going to be part of phase four but probably part of phase five but my theory is that he's going to be like either an after the credits scene in a phase four movie, or he's just going to start popping up in things before his own movie. I think well, that's why pop up in the Dr. Strange movie. Sure. Especially yeah, that'd if be like cool. Vampires, the nightmare. Why not? That'd um, be great. Well, that'd be kind of an interesting way to like that. Okay. Wow. Blades, uh, you know, popping up after Dr. Strange. We introduced black Panther before a black Panther movie. We can do the same thing with blade, you know, and, and Spider-Man, you yes. know, we did, we did it with Spider-Man. We do it with blade. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Dracula had some great Doctor Strange crossovers too, as well. Oh yes, and so it'll be a great way I, to tie. Dino oh my gosh, I hope so Blade bad we Dr. get an Strange. MCU Dracula, yes. especially with the way he looks now with the long white hair and the red armor. Like, and Dracula is like he's a real force to be reckoned with. Like, you know, fight the Avengers by himself. You know, kind of powerful. Love to see Blade versus Dracula. Yep. Do you know what I mean? It's like that. Uh, just do something that they didn't do any time at Fox. Yep. And it was like that they had, what was, oh gosh, dude, I completely forgot the name you just brought up, the villain, the, his main nemesis for the, the nemesis of Blade that you said. That I said? Yeah, I thought you said like was going to. Um, oh, oh, you're talking about, his, you're talking about Whistler. Whistler, yes. Not his nemesis, it's his uh, his partner or oh, his okay. um, mentor, mentor. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, Whist- dude. yeah Whistler uh, was, his, was his mentor, you know, it was played by Chris Christofferson uh, okay, in the. In the New Line uh, movie, and then New Line, I think, got bought out or something. But a- anyway, yes. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited. Like, I'm just, I keep like not even knowing <laughs> what to even say about it. I mean, you do another Deacon Frost story, I guess. Um, I really hope we can do like Morbius, even with like a Spider-Man tie-in or something. And I hope, I hope Sony doing a standalone Morbius movie does not ruin that. Yes. And that's the two that would be fun to see too. Morbius and connect into a Blade franchise down the line yeah. too as well. Yeah. And Spider Man, gosh, dude, is the, he's part of the MCU universe. So hopefully they will allow the type of thing too. It's like okay, if we're gonna have Spider Man, Blade, and Morbius type of thing, I don't know. I said too, it's like there's the universe is open is more than it's ever been in the past. Mm, absolutely. And so if there is opportunities to make this happen. Hopefully Sony won't try to be the person that says, no, we don't want to do this. And so far, Sony's been pretty good about cooperating really well with what Marvel Disney. I hope so. Because, I mean, like Spider-Man Far From Home is now my favorite Spider-Man movie. And I'm really excited to see 
you know, where, where we go from here, you know, especially with, with crossovers. Cause I mean, we're, we're getting more and more crossovers. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that was our San Diego comic con recap, man. There yes. was so many fun and exciting things. It's a lot to absorb coming out. Of, yes. And this is a little bit of a long episode. Uh, but thank you all for listening. Uh, we appreciate the time. We hope you're always excited for the, the future of, Marvel and Star Wars and DC and Hasbro, you know, as, as we are. And it's not even 2020 yet. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. No, it's 2019 is not even anymore. over. Uh, but thank you all for listening. You know, please like, share, subscribe, you know, continue to do so. And uh, we will see you all next week. Thank you for listening.